Uh, Steven, let's dig into some NHL draft talk, taking a peek at your early rankings, which are linked in our YouTube store or in our YouTube description today. So if you want to check it out, they can. You got Macklin Celebrini sitting in the number one spot as expected. Is he a stone cold lock to go first overall? Is this just simply put the Macklin Celebrini draft? It's not. Uh, and, and I think a lot of people were talking about Ivan Debedov, and I'll talk about him after, but saying he could be the best uh, shot here. But when it comes to Celebrini, it's just there's i asked a lot of scouts watching him at the u18s and it's like what's the biggest flaw in his game and they're like we don't know yet because he's just kind of this great two-way player puts up a ton of points he had one of the best ushl rookie seasons of all time last year with 46 goals and 86 points in chicago and then you know he got injured at the u18s with a shoulder we didn't know if he was going to start the year uh at boston university and if he did start we expect him to have a slow kind of a slow start he gets two points in his debut. Like this guy is ready to go. Um, but you know, he, he's it, it's hard to compare him to other first overall picks because again, it's so early. But just what he was able to do in the USHL last year and how comfortable he looked in his college debut, he, yeah, he's definitely the clear favorite number one right now. But I, I wouldn't say it's a shoe in yet. Okay, so we got Macklin Celebrini one, uh, proud American Cole Eiserman two. Who's three? That's a tough one. Uh, you know, you got Artem uh, Levashudov out of uh, another college defenseman, Michigan State, a big guy who moves the puck so well and put up a ton of points last year in the USHL. So it'll be interesting to see how he kind of develops. Uh, Ivan Debedov is another one that I think has got a, a fantastic shot. Um, his situation's a little interesting, though. He just got a knee injury. He's actually going to be out for, uh, I believe it's two and a half months, which is a huge blow. Um, he was kind of in the same situation, though, as Mitchkoff, which was not getting a lot of ice time with Scott St. Petersburg. And uh, he was sent down to, to the MHL, was looking to see what he could do there, and then he got hurt. But with Demidov, just talking to the number of the scouts over the summer, it's like, how do you compare him to Mitchkoff? Because that's the biggest comparable. And a lot of people said he's better. I'm not sure I agree with that yet. Um, but just the way he just is always on the attack, the way he seems to always be in the right position at the right time. And, you know, some of it seems like luck where he gets himself to, but he just knows where he has to be. And that's a basic answer of just great hockey IQ, great shot, uh, unbelievable release from in close. So that's another guy that I think people should be keeping a close eye on when he returns. Okay, so um, Lev Shunov being at Michigan State, and then also previously playing in the USHL. I know he's a Belarusian, but how much does that help him being on North American soil as opposed to some of these guys that are playing in Russia still? It's really good because um, you're, again, a lot more scouts over here in North America. A lot can't get to watch him play in Russia or Belarus. So um, for him coming over last year to play with the Gamblers, that was a, a good strategic decision. Played really well. Uh, and it's better competition than he'd be playing in a lot of times where he, if he was playing in the KHL, he would not be playing a lot of minutes. So he's getting a chance to be this big name guy of Michigan State and he already has two points. So good start. Give me an early season riser to wrap this thing up, Stephen. Who's a guy who maybe a lot of casual fans aren't hearing a lot about right now, but they will as the year goes on? Well, for last year, my choice around this time would have been David Reinbacher, and it turned out that he turned out to be a pretty good prospect. But uh, this year, it's Anton Tsiliev uh, out of Russia, who had, he was playing at a point-per-game pace early in the season. He's a defenseman, so a point-per-game uh, point pace for any KHLer is a big deal, but to do it as a defenseman, that's very impressive. He plays over 20 minutes a night. But he's also six foot seven. And he's yeah, that's getting well. a couple people excited right now. Yeah. He's a big guy who can skate, who can produce. Uh, yeah, a bunch of his points were secondary points on the power play, but he's playing on the power play. He's getting these opportunities. He's playing in all situations uh, with uh, Torpedo this year. So I don't think anyone really had him on the radar heading into the season. I know I didn't, talking to others who had never heard of him until his first KHL game this year. And right now, people are saying, like, is he a top five pick? I could, I could see it. Damn. Yeah, that is. I mean, anytime you say six foot seven and defenseman and point a game potential, it's like I would imagine there are some scouts drooling over a guy like that. Uh, Stephen Ellis, this was fantastic. As always, thanks for hopping on. We'll chat with you again next week. Yep. Thanks, guys.